Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over tomorrow's UFC card from a betting perspective. And for those of you here for the first time, it's a very contrarian approach. And the reason why we do it this way is this is the same uh, philosophy that I have with all markets where there is a big, um, where it's very, very difficult to beat the, beat the lines. I've always felt that you're, you're better off trying to gauge the public engage the psychology of the public as opposed to just trying to out analyze everybody. The thing is, is that in all markets, there's a certain uh, percentage or I guess a certain part of a line that is driven by narrative. There's a certain part of a line that's driven by public, um, I don't know, perception, a certain part of a line that's driven by what people want to happen as opposed to what's actually going to happen. And to be able to get a, Put get your finger on the pulse of the public is, uh, I think, very valuable. And this applies to not only MMA wagering, but also sports betting, also uh, stock market, particularly the stock market. And I'm not saying beating all those things is easy, okay? But I think that it puts you in a, it, first of all, it trains you to think about things in a, in, a, in a more, I don't know, critical manner when you're trying to not figure out what's most likely to happen. But trying to figure out what people think is going to happen and just come to the conclusion that if everybody thinks something is going to happen, then it's probably overvalued. Okay? And that's, that's the important presumption going into this, uh, especially with respect to MMA, because the, what happens with MMA cards is that groupthink becomes extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And throughout the course of the week, one person listens to another. One person weaves this narrative about what's going to happen. By the end of the week, the, the betting public usually settles on a very binary outcome. Whether if A is going to win, it's because of this. Or if B is going to win, it's going to be this way. And they completely discount, not completely, but for the most part, discount all the other stuff that happens that that results in, in MMA victories or losses. And it's an important thing to understand that what we're trying to do here is not recommend what's the most likely thing to win. Quite honestly, it's the opposite. When we go through this, by almost by definition, what's most likely to happen is what we're going to be fading. Okay, Because the way it works with the UFC is that by the end of the week, people have settled on not only what's the most likely thing to happen, but people are now convinced it's actually going to happen. And that's a really, really big difference. So uh, it's, it's yes. So this video is technically a betting breakdown. It's technically advice on what to do, I guess, in this week's card. But more to the point, it's trying to teach you how to think about markets more critically and trying to, and trying to I don't know, to train you to think about, about the public and, and, and narratives and, and things like that. And have this apply to not just this MMA card and not just future MMA cards, but kind of all forms of wagering that kind of work this way. Nonetheless, I uh, figured if you're going to bet the fights anyway, may as well get on some stuff that is going to be a little different. May as well get on stuff that everybody else is not playing. And more to the point, get on stuff that's not going to be overvalued. Uh, to, to, to that point, like last week, I talked about this, the uh, Julius Stolyarenko. For example, it was the most overbet single prop I think I've ever seen. Okay. Everybody was a hundred percent convinced that she was going to not only win, but she was going to submit uh Carolina in the first round. Okay. And it was the most overbet prop be just because everybody was just so convinced it's gonna happen. And and UFC is just not like that. UFC is a sport that's just ripe with chaos. And other ways, and there are other methods of victory and other results that are that are likely. So anyway, let's go over the rules here. This could be a dangerous one because we got 14 fights on the card. Uh, rule one, we're going to be betting one thing on every single fight, and that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second thing, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight on the card, and that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for me... One unit is going to remain at $180. And I do think it's somewhat healthy for content providers or people that do videos to be transparent about what they are betting. 
instead of just reducing it to units, I know, I know that everybody's different. Everybody's bankroll is different. And for one unit for me might be more money or, you know, $108 for me might be more than, than most, than some people out there, $108 might be less than the people out there, but I still think it's, it's healthy to at least have the people know exactly how much you're getting. So uh, I'm also going to put those in right here. The other thing is that, and this is like something we like to have fun with. We're going to presume that we're going to lose the first 13 fights on the card. And so as a result, always in the last fight of the night, in the main event, we have to bet something that's going to get all our money back. So on this card, we're going to have to bet something that gets 14 to 1 because it's a 13, uh, 14 fight card. Might actually only have 13 fights to bet on. Um, I hope they did put lines out of that Koki fight, but we'll, we'll get there. So let's just get started. And and as you hear me go through these, um, through these uh, this analysis, you'll be able to tell what's most likely to happen because I will tell you what people are presuming is most likely to happen, and we're never going to be betting on. So depends on what you want to get out of this. Hopefully, you're getting out of it what I intended. Well, let's go. First fight: Daniel Marcos versus uh, Ari Lang. So everybody is is we we know what's going to happen here. Daniel Marcos is going to outstrike Ari Lang. He's just much more talented, and he's going to get the job done. The only thing is that he doesn't have – he's kind of low volume, and Ori Lang is somewhat durable. So to ask for a finish for Daniel Marcos is very unlikely. So Daniel Marcos, by decision, is really what's supposed to happen here. So what we're going to do is we are going to bet him to finish. Okay, So Daniel Marcos – Inside the distance um, is probably, I don't even know what it is. Whatever it is, it's going to be a good price because no one's betting. Right. Winning winning method, Mark does inside the distance plus 225 for 180. And we're going to put it in right here. Okay. Uh, Zach Pagwa versus Bogdan Guskov. Right. This one is, is extremely easy. Um, you have... Bogdan Guskov, who is basically, I don't say one rounder bust, but he's very, very aggressive. He tries to take your head off. Okay. And even his last fight against um uh, uh he got he got dusted, but I forget, I forget who he was against. Somebody who was much better than he was. He still was very, very aggressive. And you know, the public is all over this as kind of a, a perfect spot for him. And Zach Pagwa, on the other hand, if he wins. He is going to be very, very uh, unlikely to finish. And the reason why, and this is so ridiculous when you think about this, is that he was unable to finish Jordan Wright. And Jordan Wright is someone who gets finished by everybody. So ergo, uh, he can't ever finish anybody, which means that the only way he's going to win is by decision. So it's going to be either Buskov early or Hogwell late. So what, what are we going to do? Well, neither of those things. We have to either go with Guskov, maybe by decision, or Pagwa inside the distance. And if we want to get really nasty, we'll go Pagwa actually in round one. So it's either going to be Pagwa round one, Pagwa inside the distance, or maybe Guskov by decision. What do you think, before we even look at it, is the better line, is more? Guskov by decision or Pagwa inside the distance? Let's just see. I'm not saying that's going to determine what we do, but let's just take a look. Because I actually don't know. So we have, first of all, Guskov by decision is plus 900. I mean, I'm telling you that's going to be better than, than uh, what's his name, inside the distance. Let's see, Pagua inside the distance, excuse me, is uh, plus 150. That's it? No, we're, we're going to do this. Uh, we're definitely going to do this. Guskov by decision, plus 900 for 180. Let's go. Find me someone who's betting that. Fernie Garcia versus Hyder Emil. Um, so Hyder Emil has fought very uh, low-level competition. Eight, He's 8-0. Eight no, and then you have... Bernie Garcia, who's taking this fight on short notice, going up a weight class. And usually these types of guys get faded a lot. But for whatever reason, Bernie Garcia is getting a little bit of love as far as popular underdog. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. 
we're just going to go with the Hyder Emil here. And one thing I've heard is that is that Hyder Emil is is uh what you would call him, is that he's he's uh that he pushes a really, really good pace, which he does. Okay. And that he's probably going to wear Garcia out and probably either get a decision or finish him late. So we're just going to go with Emil uh, early. So it's going to be either Emil in round one or Emil inside the distance. Let's see what these lines are. Emil, well, let's just see first just Emil inside the distance. It's a plus like 300. Maybe we'll do it. Let's see. Plus two it is plus exactly 300. What about round one? Just for funsies. A meal round one plus 650. You know what? Let's just take the 300. A meal inside the distance plus 300 for one year. And you'll see that DraftKings has by TK or submission. That that means inside the distance. Max Griffin versus Jeremiah Wells. Uh, Max Griffin, the second most talked about underdog of the week. Everybody likes Max Griffin. Um, and, and to the point where there's just literally no way. With it. It's going to be something on the Jeremiah Wells side. And uh, I honestly don't know which is. I would say more, more likely, but what's presumed to be more likely for Wells. Um, Wells did get a decision win against uh, Semmelsberger. Um, so it's really not anything. I don't know. People are not really settled on one method of victory. So we're just going to take Jeremiah Wells, just lay the 155. And I know what you're thinking, well, boy, this is supposed to be a contrarian breakdown. What are you laying 155 for? Well, again, just because it's the favorite, doesn't mean it's contrary. I promise you that if you pulled the audience, probably 80% of the betting public is taking is taking Max Griffin. It's an extremely popular pick. So we are going to fade that. All right. Uh Devin Clark versus Martin Prachniow. Devin Clark just has an incredible wrestling advantage here. Prachniow does not like to get wrestled. Prachniow is very, very low volume as well. Uh, I, I really don't see a method of victory for Prachnow here. So we're going to do Prachnow plus 195 for 180. Luma Luke Bumi versus Bruna Brazil. So Luma Luke Bumi is just basically a decision machine. Okay. She's a decision machine. She's probably more talented than Bruna Brazil, but she really doesn't finish anybody. So if she's going to win, it's going to be a you know either a striking based decision or a grappling based decision. Um, but she definitely has Bruna covered. So what that means is that what you can't bet is Luma by decision. What you can do is you can play her inside the distance, or you can play Bruna Brazil just a flat out win. But I just don't have it in me to play the Bruna Brazil but flat out win. So we are going to probably, as a matter of fact, we're going to get a better price. I think on Luma inside the distance, then Bruna to win. Bruna to win is plus 230. We have Luma inside the distance plus 225. Mm. Yeah, we'll do it. Luma inside plus 225. All right, moving on. We have, oh, here we go. The Bohagi Oki versus Timothy Kwamba. So we have a short notice replacement. Um, and basically what, what I've heard here is Oki is, I don't want to say a fraud, but uh, in his last fight, he was, they were supposed to have the other guy win or something like that. Uh, and for some reason, the other guy just didn't show up. So Oki kind of lucked into the victory. And Kwamba though, He's coming off of sh off short notice, moving up a weight class, which people don't like. I've heard a lot of both, but I honestly have heard more on the Kwamba side than the Oki side. This is a tough one from a contrarian perspective. So we're we're just gonna wimp out here and just take the the, the Oki 
and lay the 175. Very not listen, only because we said we're betting something every fight, are we doing this one? It's very little in, in 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 terms of being contrarian here. But I think that if you had to assign a side to what's more, you know, what's more popular, I think the Kwamba side. So just for that reason, we're gonna play game of pokey. Trevin Giles versus Carlos Parates. Uh, listen, Trevin Giles, he's, you know, was, was an officer. He was a police officer. He's fought some good competition, but quite honestly, uh, he's, 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 he's getting up there a little bit. Doesn't really do much. And they're bringing this Parates guys in with big power. And I don't know where Trevin Giles is going to get, you know, Trevin Giles really doesn't have it. It's going to be one of those kind of setup fights. So if that happens, we're going to lose. We'll take Trevin Giles plus the 205 for one. All right, moving on. We have Hadolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosio. Very simple, okay? So this is striker versus grappler. So if Armin wins... He is going to get, you know, get the better of the striking, not get taken down. If Vieira wins, he's probably going to get the takedowns and either get a submission or I guess he could grind out a decision or so. But usually in these cases, you have a real good public split on who's going to win here. But for whatever reason, the Petrosian side is getting all kinds of steam here, you know? And I don't, I don't exactly get it. Not to mention the fact that Vieira apparently is not having the greatest weight cut. So all those things are probably leading people a little more towards the Petrosian side. So we'll just take Vieira. Um, do, do we want to pick a, a method of victory? Well, let me... well, of course, we have to take Vieira by decision, right? Because apparently the only way he's going to win is by submission. So we'll take Vieira by decision. Plus 550 for 180. Now, again, remember what we're doing here. We're not saying what's most likely to happen. What's most likely to happen is either Petrosian gets a decision win because of his striking, or Vieira gets a submission. So those two things are the most bet, you know, the most bet options, which means they're probably the most overvalued. The only thing we can really do to get contrarian is do something else. So it's so what we have to do is pick something that has a shot, okay, that is just ignored. And I think the Vieira, it's either going to be Vieira by decision or uh, Petrosian by KO. Um, so let's see, what, what's Petrosian by KO? How about that? It's only 240, so who needs that? Vieira by decision plus 550 for 180. Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. All we know is this is going to be a war. You know, Michael Johnson is, you know, he, um, Michael Johnson is, is uh, he got knocked out pretty brutally in his last fight, but he does have some finishes. Darius Flowers is very aggressive. He could probably get takedowns here. The problem is that there's so many people on both sides of this fight. So I guess that what we should probably do is just bet the over. This is another fight, by the way, that you should probably supposed to pass. Because I think people are on both sides of this. So we'll just play just for something to do. Let's, let's, at least I'm honest, right? Um, probably won't we'll, we'll end up passing this, but because we have to do something. Wow, over 1.5 is minus only minus 120. Isn't this a lock? What about the decision? Hold on, fight lines. Popular. Um, to go the distance plus 240? Yeah, I mean, why not? Fight's going to be a war. Fight goes the distance plus 240. You're probably just supposed to take the over one and a half. But you know what, just in case they get that late, that late second round finish or something. Let 
maybe you're supposed to just take the over one and a half. Now, you know what? If they don't get in the first run, run, round and a half, we'll just presume it's going the distance. Plus two four. All right, we have Brad Tavares versus Gregory Rodriguez. Okay, I'm going to do this. I knew I was going to do this. And it's going to, it literally has no chance to win. But I'm just telling you, it's just way too much uh, steam <laughs> on other parts of this. So Gregory Rodriguez, very aggressive. Okay, very aggressive. He can get takedowns. He can... He can finish people, whatever it is. I was shocked when this line came out because I thought that Gregory Rodriguez was going to be, you know, minus 200 inside the distance or something. But when you look at it, he's actually, you can actually, it's like plus 130. Okay. And I don't even get it. I mean, that seems like such a freaking lock that I just can't bet it. Something's got to be up here, okay? So what we're what we're left with is that we can either play this thing to go the distance, or what I'm really feeling cheeky about is Brad Tavares inside. And the reason for that is we're getting, you know, listen, a lot of people are saying the truth that Greg Rodriguez does have a bad chin and he can get get knocked out. What I'm hearing is Brad Tavares just doesn't have the power to get that done. So I might be inclined to just take a shot at that. But I'm looking at it, and, and Brad Tavares by KO is only plus 500. Boy, oh boy. Can you get a submission? Well, I doubt it. I doubt it. But this is actually kind of crazy. That Tavares is by KO is the same pretty much as by decision. So we could either play Gregory Rodriguez by decision or Tavares inside the distance. I'm going to actually play Tavares inside the distance, but I don't want to just have the, 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 the KO. I want to get a little bit, just in case of submission, but I'm going to cost myself some, some, some juice there. Eh, we'll just take the Rodriguez by decision. I thought I would have it in me. To play the Tavares inside, I don't have. It. We'll just play the, the Rodriguez by decision. Something's with that line. I don't get it because it just seems that Rodriguez is a total lock to finish. But I'll just go with this. Rodriguez by decision. Maybe he gets takedowns and just kind of you know, maybe Tavares is just durable enough to survive. This has no chance. Plus one eight. I mean, plus two hundred for one. All right, a couple of more here. We have Robert Prychek versus Ihor Poteria. Um, this one, I know. I know this one already. This one is just a war, okay? Uh, Prochek is basically going to come out and try to take somebody's head off. And Poteria, even though he's getting up there, he just likes to, 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 you know, to, to swing and bang. And it's either going to be Prychek or Poteria, there's no way this makes it out of the second round. So we are going to play for it to get out of the second round. Over one and a half, plus 210, easy money. Easy money, meaning it has no chance to win, but nobody's playing. All right, two more to go. Dan Ige versus Andre Feely. Oh, I know this one. Pick me, pick me. Dan Ige is a striker, um, and uh, doesn't have great takedown defense. But in this particular matchup, Andre Feely is not the one that's going to be taking advantage of that. So Dan Ige is going to just have the striking advantage, and he's going to get the win. And I've heard some takes Ige by knockout, some takes him by decision. But I'm telling you that if you poll the audience, so to speak. I think you're going to get almost 100% participation on the Ige side of this as if he were a five to one favorite. He's like only minus one seven. I mean, this is, this is exactly what we're here for. Okay. 
Andre Feely's only plus 140, and nobody is taking That's just for me. Andre Feely, plus 142 for 180. All right, so... Let's review, before we get to the main event, we're going to have to get our money back. Let's review the atrocious picks that we've made. I feel like uh, Family Feud. Before we get into the second round, let's review the terrible selections that your partner just made. Daniel Marcos, Mr. Vo Mr. No Volume, Mr. No Finish. He's somehow going to get a finish here? Okay, good luck. Plus 225. Guskov, either round one or Pagua by decision. Whoever bets Guskov by decision has got to be out of their minds. Well, I guess that would be me. A meal um, uh, uh, inside the distance. Again, uh, this is not the greatest play in the world. There's not a real big consensus one way or another, but I just feel as though he's going to put enough of the pace on him that he's going to get there eventually. Maybe it's second round, third round, whatever. Anyway, Jeremiah Wells, uh, I don't know why we're doing this. Like all the sharp money is coming in on, um, on Max Griffin. Why would we fade the sharp money? Beats me. We're in. Marcin Prakniao. I mean, first of all, he's really boring. Nobody likes watching him fight. Devin Clark has an incredible edge with respect to the grappling. Why is he only plus 195? We'll find out. Luma Lukbum, he's never finished anybody until today, plus 225. Aoki, total fraud. I don't know why he's laying 180 to anybody. I really should pass this fight. If I did, it's going to like ruin my whole rap betting every fight though this is an atrocious play i mean it really is but you know what like i said it's so atrocious just might work trevin jaws plus 205 the officer uh hasn't beaten anybody i don't know why i'm doing this uh, because no one else is rodolfo vieira either win by submission or he's going to get knocked out how on earth is he going to win a decision we'll find out hopefully more than one in you know five and a half times uh, Michael Johnson, Darius Flowers, war number one to go the distance, plus 240. Gregory Rodriguez, certainly going to finish this dude, but if, if so, we lose, plus 200 by decision. War, Prechek versus Pateria, war over one and a half. What's it good for? Plus 210 is what it's good for. Absolutely nothing. Andre Feely, plus 142. He's being bet like he's be plus 900. So anyway, I'm sure these are all going to lose. So we have to come up with something in the main event that's going to get us 14 to 1. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the, at the fight first. The good thing is we know exactly what the public is thinking. We know exactly what's overbet, and we know exactly what's overvalued. What's going to be the problem here is finding something that plays 14 to 1. But the good thing is, worst case, we could pick an actual round for something to happen. For example, you have you have uh, Joe Pfeiffer, who is very aggressive, and he's going to get after it. And if he wins, it's going to be in the first two rounds. That's just the way it is. Jack Hermanson does have five round of cardio, so if he survives, then he could probably win a volume based decision. So, what are you not allowed to bet? Pfeiffer round one, Pfeiffer round two. Hermanson by decision. So that does open up some, some options here, okay? Let's take a look at what else we can get for 14 to 1. I'll tell you what would be really neat. If we got something like one of these guys by submission, because I think that's the way this is going to end up if, for 14 to 1, right? You can't bet anybody by decision 14 to 1. We're going to bet one of these dudes – by submission, I think. Let's just let, let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look and see what's going on. First of all, just to, to confirm, Hermanson by decision plus 700 is not enough. Pfeiffer by decision plus 600 not enough. Now, what you could do is you pick any particular round. Like, if you want to play Pfeiffer by submission, you could play Pfeiffer in, by submission in round two. At 14 to 1, that's definitely fun. So that's definitely possible. Because not only that, but it actually does fall into what's most likely to happen that if he wins it's in round one or two, but the submission part is not as popular. But if you could play, if you can get her Manson by sub, 
in a particular round. Boy, oh boy. Let's just do the let's just do the Piper by sub round two. I'm gonna go for that one. Pfeiffer by sub, round two, the 180. Uh, and as I said, once um, once we log off of here, I'll put this stuff in. I'm not going to be able to do it because um, it's going to, you know, because what's his name? Uh, because Zoom hates me, I'll show you. We'll accept the odds changes. 14 bets for 25, 20, but look, it's going to say looking around, right? Yeah, okay. So once I log off of here, I'll put these things in and uh, that'll do it. Stay tuned. Um, later tonight or tomorrow morning, we're going to do a lineup build show uh, for for UFC, and uh, that would that you know that's actually going to be much more educational and more relevant. But this is uh, some fun stuff to hopefully get you thinking about betting in a different way. Good luck, everybody.